Hi Booktube, Lynette here and this video is going to be about the books that I read in the month of May. May was a more successful than I thought reading month. Um, I was taking part in a couple of readathons, there was a round of the final book support group um, and there was also the Escape the Readathon run by Lexi um, over at Books and Lexi. Um, and that is a readathon that becomes extremely competitive. I am not a competitive person by nature, except with myself. I compete with myself. Um, and I hold myself to standards. And if I don't meet them um, or don't meet goals, then I do get downhearted. And this was one of those months. However, looking back and reflecting when I was filling in the wrap up page of my journal, I realised that actually I did a lot better than I thought um, and that I should actually be proud of myself for that. At this point that I'm filming, we don't know the outcome of Escape the Readathon. Um, Final Book Support Group, I don't really remember reading books in series of Final Book Support Group. But I think that's maybe because I concentrated on one in particular, which was quite a chunky book. Um, but when I look back over it, I actually did do quite well um, as far as series is concerned, because as long time watchers will know, when it comes to a round of final book support group, I try to dedicate the entire month to continuing series and make progress because I don't have that many that I only have maybe one or two books left to read. So I do just try and dedicate the whole month to making progress. So let's just go through some of the regular monthly stats for you. I managed to read a total of 11 books this month and they worked out to a total of 3,517 pages and eight hours and nine minutes of audio. The average rating is 3.2 across all of the books. Um, and I had some good, not so good ratings. I actually had a one star rating this month and I had a four and a half star rating this month. So I kind of almost had the full spectrum of ratings as it is. I read three physical books, which you saw in the thumbnail, seven ebooks and one audio book. The genres that I read are my main staples of genres. So romance, fantasy and crime fiction. And all of the books that I read were in a series in some format or another. Six of them were the first book in series. Three of those series though I have decided that I'm not going to continue on with. One book completed a series, um, one book was a companion novel and three books were continuing a series. There were no standalone books at all in my reading for the month of May, which actually was a lot better than I thought because I thought I'd read a lot of standalones to be perfectly honest with you. In terms of reducing my owned TBR, um, I did better again, I did better than I thought I did. So six books were from my TBR that I have read this year. So I have um, now, I think I now have a total of 26 pounds book money that will be mine at the end of this year. So I will continue setting that aside for that. Four books were either from the library or came from Kindle Unlimited. Now only one book was actually from the library. So I've only earned 50 pence. Uh, from that um, and one book was a brand new purchase this month um, but again that one new purchase this month was um, an actual dedicated purchase for a reason it wasn't just a purchase on a whim because it was my book club pick for the month so let's talk about the books that I actually read shall we the first book I finished this month is another one in my continued quest to read as many books as possible from the authors attending for Brits Book Fest in July. This book was Lords of Darkness by Amanda Richardson. Um, I have to say this book, this book had me failing conflicted. It is a why choose romance. Um, there are four men who are part of 
some type of political slash mafia slash that sort of gang um and there is supposed to be five of these families uh that are all joined together and these four guys have to approach the next oldest person in the generation because one of their number has passed away the fifth member has passed away so it needs to and this is ends up actually being a woman um i i don't mind why choose romance um i have to say i don't mind why choose romance when all parties are um on board with it it's good i don't like love triangles where the you know um where there's elements of cheating going on but why choose is completely different for that reason um it kind of the plot kind of fell a little bit short for me um the romance was definitely the strong part of uh, the author's writing um but the plot kind of it, it moved too fast there was a little bit of and in some ways there was a little bit of pacing um, you thought you were moving days in the future and then it would refer to something that happened yesterday and yeah there were there was a little bit of um, inconsistency there however I do want to read the next book in the series which is why I'm feeling conflicted about the route that we go down with this book because did I love it did I not I saw something in it because I have been thinking about picking up the second book for quite some weeks now because like I say this was the first book that I finished in the month and in fact I think I finished it on the second of the month so it's like 31 days ago that I finished this and I'm still thinking about the second book so it's definitely one that I'm going to continue very soon um, and yeah so kind of a win kind of not sort of thing maybe it's one of those that the writing will get better as the author moves on through the series we shall see my second book for the month and this was my only library book however this is not the library book copy because after I had read this I decided that I am going to need the entire series on my shelves um I was a little unsure after I read the first book which is why I went and got this one from the library initially I wasn't sure how I was going to feel um because it took me a year nearly a year to read the first book however this book was devoured in days um now i did start it in the middle of april but i only read the first 50 or so pages in april and then i whizzed through it in just under a week um for the month of may and that book is the name of all things by jen lyons this is the second book in her a chorus of dragons series in this one we are we still have Kirin in this one but in this one we are telling two different um people's stories so they have the same story um but it's being told by two different people again only this time it's the same it's not a back and forth timeline so you don't have one starting earlier in the series the story and someone else telling from a midpoint in the series this time they're telling um the story from the same uh perspective they just keep switching which one of them is telling it so the story is told by a character called janelle and a character called Cown. sorry i was just looking through trying to find their names um because i couldn't think of them and they're on the back why why do i do that to myself anyway this is picking up um from a few days after the end of the ruin of kings only like i say this time we're not following kirin um there are interludes in between the um storytelling period where we're hearing from kirin and he's progressing his story in terms of dealing with janelle and Cown, and obviously how his story is going to tie into their story a little bit um you don't get lots of giveaway on that um but yes I did enjoy this and I have to say um, that like I say once I'd finished reading this I then went online and I've ordered this book The Memory of Souls, um, The House of Always and The Discord of Gods. My copy of The Memory of Souls has not arrived um, and that's the next one to read and so I'm getting frustrated with Waterstones and I've emailed them today because it was in stock and it should have been 
dispatched within two to three days of the order and it's been over a week and it still hasn't been dispatched so i'm itching that i i do have the library copy but i'm kind of like why would i start the library copy when i've got my own copy on the way um so there's just my little rant of the day but yes i'm thoroughly enjoying the name of all things um i'm not sure how i'm gonna go with the memory of souls because the memory of souls i think goes back to thervishar and kirin's um storytelling if it carries on in the same style as it did with this one it'll be fine but if it's like the ruin of kings where we're going backwards and forwards in a timeline in a story i might find it a little more difficult to get through but so far so far really enjoyed this book and this is the best book in the series for me so far so jade if you are watching i agree so far this is the best book in the series my third finish for the month is Take Me Home by Carrie Elks. Now, this is the book that I have been saying is my favourite of the month. It shares the highest rating of the month. Um, but I think the reason it is the best of the month is the one, it, it's the one that has given me the most joy while I was reading it. It is a romance. It is another author who will be at Four Brits Book Fest. And yeah um i thoroughly enjoyed picking it up and it's another one it's the beginning of a series it's small town romance i think the series is going to follow a uh, family and we meet all of them in this book it's um it's about gray and maddie gray is maddie's older sister's high school boyfriend first love which is what makes it forbidden romance um, Grey left town to become a big hotshot, I think he might be country music star, he's definitely a, a music star. Um, and he's had to return to town to deal with some things that are happening around the family home because his father has become ill. And he meets Maddie by chance, she rescues him from a horde of uh, young admirers that live in the town um, and because he's never been home They've never learnt to interact with him as a person and see him as a human being. So they see him as the god that they perceive him to be and they treat him in that manner. Uh, from there, um, we have um, some funny interludes that have them falling in love with each other and then them go going around in secret trying to hide the fact that they're together. Um, they are not as successful as they think they are but then some things get outed and it causes some friction I think one of the things though about this book that I love so much is that there was the potential for a third act breakup there was potential for outside forces to influence how they feel about each other and being together and it didn't and actually I really like that it did it has caused some conflict what Carrie Elks did is that it caused conflict between the people who were trying to influence the, whether they were a couple or not. And it caused the conflict there instead of between Grey and Maddie. Um, so that was so much refreshing. They they defended their relationship. They defended being together. They are, as far as I am concerned, I don't think there is anything going on the the older sister and gray had separated 10 years before they were teenagers they were 18 um they're now in their late 20s she is married and had children and is happy and actually she says she doesn't want any part of gray um and she's happy where she is you know the life she's living is the life she wanted and is not the life that gray could have given her um or if he had he would not have been happy the way they've gone about their lives is actually better for them and it i don't see anything wrong with the younger sister then becoming involved with gray when he comes back to town and i i really really enjoyed the fact that they fought for themselves fought for each other um to get to their happy ever after so i think that's why i'm saying that this is my favorite book of the month because like i say just right the way through even through the angsty bits towards the end where outside forces were trying to break them up i think it just kept me smiling and that is why um it's my favorite book of the month of may 
My fourth finish of the month was A Demon and His Witch by Eve Longley. Um, and this is a paranormal, supernatural uh, romance series starter. I think it's the Welcome to Hell series. This wasn't a great book for me. Um, it's one that's been on my TBR for quite some time. It is about Isabel and Remy. Isabel is a witch who was um, murdered for being a witch over 500 or just under 500 years ago. She's days away from um, her 500th anniversary and Remy is a demon. Both of them are working for Lucifer. Um, Isabel is his personal assistant and um, she's quite fiery and feisty. She has been serving as his uh, personal assistant for the entire time that she's been in hell. Um, it was a bargain that she struck with Lucifer. Remy is a demon who does lots of security for him and the people who actually killed Isabel are also in hell because that was again part of the bargain that she made. Um, they were all hunted down and killed and they all went to hell. They have escaped um, from their punishments and they have to be relocated and returned or Isabel will not be released from her bargain with Lucifer and Remy is assigned to help her. It's very much insta love now i don't normally mind a good insta love story um but this one i think there was just too little of anything that might have had them feelings for each other now one thing that i did like was um she is going isabel is going through some things as a result of what is going on and Remy actually is very supportive and does his best to help her. He doesn't initially listen to her when she says no, which isn't always a good thing. But it actually turns out to be for the best because she needs help and support and he is able to then give it to her. Um, so he was a little bit... Mm, um, it's not a book that I've decided, it's one of the series that I've decided I will not be continuing with um, because I just didn't, I read it, it was short, it was fast paced, it was only a couple of hundred pages um, and it just, it just got me through and it, yeah, it got it off of my TBR as well. So that's all I can really say about it. It's, it's not one I'd recommend. It's not one I'd consider going back to. My fifth finish for the month is the book that completed a series and that book is These Twisted Bonds by Lexi Ryan. This is the follow-up to These Hollow Vows. Um, it's a duology and it's following a young girl, Brie, whose sister was sold to the Fae and she has to go and rescue her. Now, all of that happens in book one. This book follows on. Now when I read book one I was quite lucky and I had book one as um, an arc from NetGalley, an early copy and I would have said that how these hollow vows ended I would have been happy with how that book ended um, because of the power that Brie took for herself right at the end of that book. Now this book then reintroduces some angst um, as a result of that because it then moves on and because of how some things were left it means that some other things going on in the realm in the fey realm um, it just isn't um, going to work out and it's going to cause more problems than it has solved uh, so this goes on from there this is fantasy romance there's kind of a romance running through both books um in the first book it was a bit of a love triangle in this book you're not quite sure which way she's going to go and the romance does kind of take a bit more of a back burner um based around because the the thing resolving the problems within the fey realm actually come to more of a four in this one and so i don't think the romance had enough attention to it um and i don't think it has worked out quite 
right for me. Um, I still really enjoyed it. I'm glad, so glad that I got this and picked this up um, because I'm, I really wanted to finish it. I requested an early copy of this from NetGalley and was turned down and I was so disappointed. And then when it came out, I couldn't get hold of, um, I could only get hold of paperback copies of the first book. So I had to wait until the paperback version of this came out so that I would have a matching copy for my shelves because we all know that I can't separate series by format. Um, and I class hardback and paperback as different formats. Um, so it's taken me so long to get to this, but I'm glad that I finished it. These are going to stay on my shelves. I am not going to unhaul these. I can see me rereading these at some point. I do quite often think about these hollow vows. And I think actually I would like to at some point sit down and read them both through, one straight after the other, and get the whole thing. Maybe the romance in this would have been better for me if I had more memory of what happened in the first book. So definite future reread, although God knows when that will be. My sixth finish of the month was Captured by Her Cougar by Felicity Heaton. This is another one that has been on my TBR for absolute years. And it follows um, a group of cougar shifters, four brothers, and then meeting their forever mates. In this one, the brother that we're following, um, his fated mate is the sister of an enemy of the clan. And because of things that happened in book one, she has been taken captive by him. Hence the title Captured by Her Cougar. And things go from there. It's really fast paced. You don't see anything. It's insta love because they're fated mates. Um, so there isn't a lot of story telling how they fell in love. There is some danger for them, which, you know, you get them thinking about how they adore each other and how they can't be without each other and and then towards the end you know she he finally reveals his real personality so she realizes that they're more alike than she thinks and that maybe they do have a chance of working I just I just enjoy Felicity Eaton's writing they're always quick and easy for me to get through um, and I just need to catch up with her writing. So this was another attempt to do that. And it's another one. I'm glad I picked it up. Um, at some point, I'll finish the other two books in the series because it is completed. When that will be, I don't know. But they're certainly in the back of my head for future final book support group rounds. My seventh finish of the month was Amour by H.L. Packer. H.L. Packer is an author, is going to be at Four Brits Book Fest, but not as an author doing a signing. But I still wanted to read it anyway. Uh, she uh, runs the Romance Readers Book Box, which is where I got this copy. She put it in as an additional book. Um, and she doesn't always self-promote. So if you do like um, self-published romance and you want paperback copies then do go and check out Romance Readers Book Box. Um, it is a great box and I, I do enjoy getting it when I can afford to get it because it is um, it's a little bit out of my price range at the moment but you know I'm thinking about getting it in the future so we'll we'll see where we go from there. Anyway this was a little disappointing I can see the bones of a good story here. It is about Kian, who is a boxer, an underground boxer, um, and Tia, who is daughter of an Italian mafia family. Um, and they meet in London, have a bit of an interlude, and then go their separate ways, not expecting to see each other again, until Kian is employed by Tia's family to box for them. Um, there's lots of back and forth then, there's the Irish Mafia are involved, the Italian Mafia, there's a bit of a rivalry there, there's something going on with Kian, you don't really know what, there's another woman in the picture, you don't know who she is, um, and there's a little bit of angst. Now, this book, I think, suffers from a lack of development of plot. Um, it does kind of lurch from one thing to another. It doesn't, it didn't flow that well for me. 
I liked the overall story. I think it was a great idea. Um, however, I think it needed some work. It needed some development. I mean, it is a 350 page story. Um, but I just wonder if maybe it could have been, it could have done, I mean, I, I, it could have done with an editor's eye on it, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but not in a negative way. I say that sometimes about books and I mean it because the writing is truly awful um, and it could do with an editor giving them their honest opinion. I think in this case, I think it needs an editor who would be invested in developing the story um, and helping Heather with changing um, some things around and making some things flow better and, and expanding on some parts of the story to, to make them a bit more fleshed out and a little less... A little less background and a lot more kind of rounded so could do i mean i would i would read books by heather again um she's not an author that i would never read again it's just that this book didn't quite hit the mark for me the next finish of the month was my only audiobook and i read listened to this in a day now yes it's an eight hour audiobook i only listened to it in about five six hours because i listened to it on one and a half times speed it is a series that I want to continue. It's one of the series starters that I'm really intrigued by. This is The Librarian of Crooked Lane by C.J. Archer. This is about a young woman. It's 1920s set um, and she is working in a library institution kind of that has members that come and go and she's fired from that job because her friend keeps visiting her and the person who runs the institution frowns on the fact that he had to employ a woman in the first place um so yeah so and it goes from there uh she meets someone through the course of this work who is also part of the reason that she is fired and he then apologizes to her by getting her a job in the library that he runs now this library is made up of works that are all around magic this is magical realism uh fantasy it is uh mystery i can't remember whether it was a murder mystery or not but it was a mystery and um the main character becomes involved in solving the mystery and she i think there's a kind of meant to be an undercurrent of a romance there but the the guy that she kind of has feelings for is involved with someone else um so there were there were some bits maybe it was because of the pace that i was listening to it at. maybe if i'd been reading it some things might have gone over a little better to me, but I thoroughly enjoyed it and I really want to pick it up and read another book. For me, it, um, I could picture 1920s clothing, um, 1920s settings, you know, that sort of, it really evoked that era for me. And I really felt that actually I quite enjoyed it, you know, the old gas lamps and and I just had this real feeling of nostalgia and it was the magical realism and the mystery and it all just came together and was just almost a perfect book for me. Um, so thoroughly uh, enjoyed it and will definitely at some point when I can get my hands on it, will be continuing the series because I th there's going to be a new mystery and I can't, I like crime fiction, I like mystery novels, so definitely one to keep an eye on. My next finish was the book club choice for the month and that was The Diviners by Libba Bray. This is another fantasy 1920s crime mystery novel. And I think this one suffered because of how I felt about The Librarian of Crooked Lane. Um, because again, it had all the elements that I was enjoying in The Librarian of Crooked Lane, but I didn't enjoy it. And I think maybe it's because I really disliked the main character. Um, now she's only 17 and I, I take um, the lady's point about this. She is a product of her time. Now Libba Bray has done lots of research and you can see that through the writing um, into the, the, the time, into the early 20s. And what she's done is she has made uh, the main character a real character of the 20s all the slang terms and and everything 
you know, it's it's there, but it's for me it was every sentence and it just there there were there was one sentence and I can't quite remember the full sentence. Um but basically the the young girl was saying that it absolutely downpoured with rain. And I had to reread that sentence three times before I understood what she was saying. No, no. Um, it just got on my nerves. And unfortunately, that suffered for me. Um, and I'm not going to continue the series. I can, I can see the bones of good writing. I think maybe um, if Chrissy and Susie and Jess continue... Um, and report back good things about it. Maybe I'll give the second book a try. Um, but it's definitely not a series I would invest in. I've read the synopsis for the three other books in the series. Um, yes, kind of interested in that, in how it turns out. But I think I'd rather read a summary, someone else's summary of what happens. Um, and read spoilers rather than actually sit down with the whole books themselves. So unfortunately that wasn't a win for me um yeah so two months in a row because I, I didn't even start the previous month's book because I knew I wouldn't like it um so yeah hopefully fingers crossed June's book will be a much better pick my 10th book was a letdown it's romance it's Black Horse by AC Williams it's meant to be forbidden romance it's meant to be dark romance and it missed on all counts and the writing wasn't that great either. I've had this book on my shelves for years, so thankfully it's another one that's gone um, and it's done and I don't have to be intrigued by the cover anymore. Um, it's about a young couple that when they were children, uh, the main, the male character's um, father killed his mother and also they went on to kill the female main character's family as well. Um, and he's about to get out of prison and he's coming for the female character because her testimony, because she saw him, um, is what got him put away. And he was so badly written, guys. It just, I could not, I don't know what, I think I was hate reading it in the end because it just I just needed to get it off my shelves and I didn't want to DNF and I was I was a little bit invested um because of the dark you know but then kind of you 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 kind of you had a you had a prologue with the murderer killing the girl's family and then you had some story between the boy and the girl obviously them being together and conflict with her brothers because they don't want them to be together and and then you had a bit in the middle where it was re it was it was telling how the boy's mother died and then it went back to and it just didn't work it just did not work um and it was just it was very superficial it was um it felt like there was no depth to the characters it was very surface level and i hate read it basically um it's it's what happened i hate read it uh and i gave it a very low rating i think this was my one star of the month will not be continuing this series either um and yeah i'm i'm glad it was many years ago that i paid for it and not current um i think i've probably got quite a few on my shelves like that now so yeah watch this space moving forward with romance on my shelves because that could be that could be an ongoing issue but you know what it's done let's move on let's talk about book 11 shall we book 11 i came across by accident now when i first had my kindle back in 2011 2012 um somehow i stumbled across an author who wrote crime fiction set in alaska that author is dana stabenow and I got sucked into her Liam Campbell series, of which at that time there were four books. And I read them. I did start reading the Kate Shugak series that she start that she also has written, and she's written a lot more books in that series. But I think by the time I read that one, I got burnt out and I didn't follow through with her. Um 
so I kind of left it. Anyway, my mum was talking to me about books that she was reading and she was telling me about a crime fiction series she was reading that's set um, in Devon. Uh, we, I live in the southwest of the UK, I live in Somerset. Uh, my mum comes from Devon and she'd been reading this book and there were lots of areas that um, you know she knows about she she's been to she's you know she knows the areas and she told me about them and I looked them up and it then recommended me Spoils of the Dead by Dana Stabano and I was like okay I'll have a look I'll see what it is because it said a Liam Campbell novel and I'm like Liam Campbell was the main character in the four books that I did enjoy and it was a fifth book in the series now it's been quite a few years between book four and book five um, because it is actually a fairly new release only she's released it in Kindle Unlimited so I had to borrow it so I downloaded it and I read it um, right at the end of May and I found a little hard going to start with because it's been years since I read the previous four books so I had to, to kind of get to know Liam um, a bit more. And in this book, he's moved on from the posting that he was in before. I should say he's an Alaskan state trooper. Um, and he is moving to a new post in this one. And as soon as he moves to the new post, he gets sucked into a murder mystery. And this is all about that. It's um, a some bones are found in a cave and then as a result of that they find a second victim it's only around 283 pages so it's not a long book so there isn't a lot of plot progression so the the ending of the story does move very very quickly and in some ways you spend i think you, i think i spent almost half the book getting to the actual bodies being found um so there wasn't a lot of time for the crime and for evidence to be found but I had a good time with it and I really enjoyed it um, and I hope she brings out more in this series because I would like to read more I, I don't know that I'll ever go back to the Kate Shugak series but I think with the Liam Campbell series I could quite see it and I think because I enjoy the interaction between Liam and his wife um, Wyanette because they, they keep changing each other's ringtones and it's absolutely hilarious because the ringtones are completely inappropriate for the people that they've set them for and some of the ringtones that um, they hear are inappropriate for the setting in the time that they are actually ringing um, and it just made me laugh as well uh, so it was quite light-hearted yet serious at the same time there is um, a moment towards the end where Liam has a bit of um, a moment where he realises that you shouldn't judge people on the covers because he has judged one person on their initial meeting and actually that person had a lot more um, about them than first thought. Um, so yeah, so it's definitely a series that if more come out, I, I want to know about them and I do want to read them, um, especially if they're on Kindle Unlimited so I don't have to pay for them because I'm still trying to save money and not buy books. Um, but yeah, so that was my final finish for the month. Um, it was a much better wrap up than I thought it was going to be. Like I say, I did have some duds and I did have some great books. So, you know, 3.2 average probably isn't that bad. Um, better probably better than when i get kind of a three average when i have lots of good books in a month um because that means that the the mediocre ones really did pull it down um uh, but yeah i'm i'm glad of this month like i say escape the readathon became a little too competitive for me the games were fun and interesting um lexi is an evil genius um I think we just kind of, the games that we got to, my, the team that I was on, the games that we got to at the end were some of the most difficult games to get through. Um, could have done with unlocking those at the start. Um, yeah, we'll see. I don't know what the outcome is. Waiting for Lexi's video to go up on that so we can all find out together. And yeah, so that was my May wrap up. How many books did you read in May? Let me know in the comments down below. Did you have any standout reads? Did you have any almost five star reads? Did you have any one star reads? 
like hearing from you down below so please do give me a thumbs up and comment um i really do enjoy hearing from you if you have enjoyed this video like i say give it a thumbs up subscribe if you want to see more of me in your feed and i look forward to seeing you in my next one bye